Greetings, detectives. Mrs. McKay here, and we're ready to start on our third clue for case seven, and it is I can use a graphing calculator to solve a system with more than two inequalities. I've written it at the top of this page. You'll notice that this is not our normal notes page. We're using a page out of our student assignment book. And so go ahead and write across the top the same thing that I've written, our learning target. While you're doing that, let me just remind you of what we've learned so far. We've learned how to graph a system of, in, of linear equations by graphing a line and looking to see how to, to find the place where those two lines intersect, the point. We've also learned, that was in case six, we've also learned how to graph linear inequalities, where we graph one line, shade the half plane, graph another line, shade the half plane, and look where the two half planes intersect. And remember that when you're looking at inequalities, there's more than one answer. It's a whole region or a whole area of your coordinate plane. There are many points that would make the statements true because an inequality is not one specific point, but a region. Now let's go ahead and read through this first problem and see if we can figure this out. The difference is, is that we're going to be solving more than two inequalities, and we're not going to be doing it all by hand. We're going to be using a graphing calculator. So if you haven't opened up Desmos yet, and if you haven't watched the short little video that explains how to use Desmos in graphing inequalities, make sure you do that. Pause it and do that first. All right? Now let's go ahead and read our, our problem. It says the Brunstown Ballet Company needs to rent a venue for their holiday production of the Nutcracker. There are a number, number of arenas that they are considering. The arenas have seating capacities that range from 1,800 to 1,876 seats. The management of the ballet company knows the ticket sales may not be good this year, but the goal is to sell between 65% and 90% of the available seats. Whichever arena they choose, 100 seats must be set aside for the ballet company's donors. Now, our first question says to write a system of inequalities that represents the problem situation and define your variables. So with Desmos, we almost always, well, we pretty much do, have to use X and Y. So we're going to go ahead and um, think about the two things that we don't know that could change, and we're going to label one X and one Y. X is normally our independent variable, so the thing that um, is somewhat set and then, and then determines our dependent variable is, um, is the thing that we're going to call x. And our dependent variable is going to be y. So think about this and see if you can think about what the two variables are in the first place. Well, I think that the x variable is the available seats, meaning however many seats are available in the arena we choose. Depending on the arena or the theater, there may be 800 seats or there might be 1,876 seats. So there's a range between 800 and 1,876. So I'm just going to say that x is going to be um, greater than or equal to 800 seats. And x is also can be less than or equal to what? 1,876 seats. So that's our first thing. All right? Now that's actually, that's actually not completely correct because um, according to this, 100 seats have to be set aside for the ballet company's donors. So X is going to be the available seats for tickets. Sold. So that means that we have to subtract 100 from each of those because those are not tickets that can be sold, right? So then in reality what we have here is we have X is greater than or equal to 700. That's how many tickets could be sold if we chose the smallest arena. And x would be less than or equal to 1,776. 
which would be how many tickets could be sold if uh, we chose the largest arena. Now, there's another variable. Thoughts on that variable? We'll call that one Y. Well, it tells us that um, they have to sell a certain amount of tickets. And what they're hoping is that they want to be able to sell 65% of the tickets or or 90%. So they want to be able to get between 60 and 90%, 65% and 90% of the tickets. So I'm going to say that Y is the actual ticket sold. Okay? And that means that whatever X is, Y has to be greater than or equal to 65% of X because X is how many tickets are available to sell. So we'll say 0.65X. Or Y is less than or equal to 0.9X, or 90%. So however many tickets we have available, we want to sell 65% of them, at least, but no more than 90% of them. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's go ahead and graph these. Now instead of graphing them on this graph down here, I want to graph them on Desmos and then I'll just copy it. All right, so let's go ahead and open up Desmos. Now the first thing that I'm going to do as I have my Desmos opened up is I'm going to change my uh, ranges a little bit because if you notice, Right now, the way that Desmos is lined up, it's got, it's just every, every interval is one. But I'm going to be dealing with big numbers like uh, 800 and um, 1,800. So I'm going to, so I'm going to change my uh, range here. Well, first of all, I'm going to label my axis. I'm going to say that my x-axis is available. So I'm going to type in there, available, if I can get my screen to pop up. So X is going to be my available tickets, and Y is going to be my sold tickets. All right? Then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not going to worry about the X is greater than or equal to, because every time I, I zoom in or do something, it will change. But and you can't really see it, but over to the right-hand side, it says step, and I'm going to put 400 as my step. So you might want to do that. And I'm going to do that for the Y as well. I'm going to say that my, my step is 400, which just means that um, I want my intervals to be hundreds or 400s instead of um, ones. Okay, and it didn't really do what I wanted, but... We'll see what happens when I start putting in my, my, my four variables or my four inequalities. So I have some inequalities. Let's remember what they are. So remember that I have x is greater than or equal to 700, x is less than or equal to 1,776, y is greater than or equal to 0.65x, and y is less than or equal to 0.9x. And I'm going to put in all four inequalities type them in and see what I get. All right? I went back into my settings again, the little wrench, and I did change my x, my x minimums and maximums to x is greater than or equal to 400 and x is less than or equal to 2000 for both my x and y so that I could get zeroed in a little bit more on the graph, the area of the graph that I wanted to do. So you might want to do that as well. Now, I've, I've written all of my inequalities here, but I've hidden them so that I don't see too much yet. So look at my first one. It says x is greater than or equal to 700. x is less than or equal to 1,776. So I'm going to show those first. So you can see in red that everything from 700 700 over is shaded in red, right? 
And now I'm going to graph um, this one, and you can see every one, everything from 1,776. Well, you can't really see it. Let me see if I move this over just a little bit. There we go. 1,776 is shaded in blue to the left because it's less than. So what we're really going to be looking at is the area that's in between, in between these two boundary lines. So what I'm going to do is instead of having a bunch of shading over and over, I'm going to just change these two boundary lines to equal signs instead because we know it's going to be in between the two. That way we don't see so much shading. Okay, and then this one. Now again, I'm looking at what's between the red and the blue lines. That's the area that I really want to focus on because that's the part where those are the values of x that we're going to be looking at. But again, I'm going to have so many different shades going on that I just want to know that that's where I'm going to be paying attention. So that's why I made it be x equals 700 because then it just made the boundary line. And I know I'm on the right-hand side of the red and x equals 1,776. I know I'm on the left of that. So I'm in that section, that, that one slice, I'm inside there. Now, let's go ahead and graph y is greater than or equal to 0.65x. Maybe. Okay, just having trouble with my tablet. So you can see now that I have y is greater than or equal to 0.65x, and you can see that it's drawn my boundary line, and it's shaded above it, right? Because y is greater than that. And remember, we're still looking at what's in between these two lines right here, okay? Now, let's look at the next one. So this one is y is less than or equal to 0.9x. So again, now I've got a new a new line, a boundary line, and it's shaded below. And what we want to look at is this area, this slice from here, from this point right here, 700, 530, to this point right here, 700, 455, to this point right here, well, 1,776, um, 1,598, and this point right here. Well, not quite there. Let's do this one right there. There we go. So that's the area that we're looking at from here to here to here to here. All right? So now take a minute and graph this on your paper. So copy what we've done here and graph it on your paper. Okay, so it took me a while. It probably took you a while as well. But here's... Um, what I did was I graphed it out. I did these by 100s because I had enough. And then I graphed my, my two, um, x is equal to 600 or, sorry, 700 and x is equal to 1776. It's really greater than or equal to, but I just didn't want to have all that shading. So I knew it was going to be in between these two lines. And then I graphed my other two lines, and really all I did was I copied what was on Desmos, and then I looked to see that this, it's this shaded area, this kind of light purpley gray area is the area where all the available and sold tickets, those where, that's where any of those points will make my, my four equations true, will be true for my four equations, all right, for this one and these right here, okay? Now, now that we have it graphed, we can answer some questions. So let's turn the paper over and look at the other side.